Hello, my name is Christine Cruz. I'm a meteorologist with the National Weather Service in Salt Lake City, Utah, and I'm here to present the winter outlook. So winter speaking about meteorological winter, December, January, and February for 2022-2023 for Utah and Uinta County, Wyoming. First up, the official Climate Prediction Center winter outlook. And on the left side of your screen, you can see the seasonal temperature outlook for December, January, and February. And odds are in favor of above normal temperatures, or at least tilting that way, for most of Utah with the strongest signal across the southern tier of Utah. And then when you look to the right of your screen, you'll see the seasonal precipitation outlook. And most of the state is in equal chances, meaning there's an equal chance of above normal, below number, normal, and near normal precipitation. Except for the southern tier where the signal's a little bit stronger and you see the odds slightly favoring below normal precipitation. So we've been talking about La Nina the last several years and we are still in a La Nina advisory that remains in effect with a 75% chance of La Nina continuing through February. And so this slide shows you what is the typical winter La Nina pattern across the Northern Hemisphere. And how that all sets up is you have those cooler waters over the Eastern Pacific and that aids in the development of this blocking high pressure over the Eastern Pacific. And on the edge of that high pressure, you have a variable polar jet stream. And so exactly where that high pressure sets up and that jet stream is, has a really big impact for what La Nina means for Utah. There are some years where Utah will be quite dry because that high pressure sets up further east, the jet streams further east over the plains, and we just sit under a ridge for most of the winter. Meanwhile, there are some La Nina patterns where that ridge sets up or that high pressure sets up further west, the jet stream stays over northern Utah or even northern central southern Utah, and we see storms through the winter. And so that's really, that subtle shift is really going to be what impacts what our winter looks like this year. So every La Nina is different. And what we did was we looked at the 28 La Ninas since 1925 and looked to see how many of them had above average precipitation. And so when you look at this map, you can see the lower elevations of central and southern Utah are in that yellow color or even that orange color, meaning somewhere between three and 11 of those La Ninas saw above average precipitation. When you start to look into the central mountains and then into northern Utah, you're starting to see some of those grays to light greens, which is 12 to 20 of uh, the 28 La Ninas had above average precipitation. When you look at temperatures, the signal's a little bit stronger. You can see that yellow color for almost all of the lower elevations or even that brownish color, meaning that 16 to 25 of the 28 La Ninas showed above average temperatures in those areas. The mountains in most locations are more that gray 12 to 15. So you see a really strong signal related to temperature with, with La Nina episodes. So what can Utah and Southwest Wyoming expect for this winter? We went through and we looked at four different cities and what their probabilities are for both temperatures and precipitation for December, January, and February. You can see Salt Lake City, there's a slight nudge in the bin for above normal precipitation at 35%, but below normal and near normal are both around 33%. When you look at precipitation for Salt Lake City, they're all almost equal. St. George, you see, just like we saw on those maps from the CPC, that the probability of temperatures being above normal, that is the, the biggest bin for St. George with 44% probability, whereas below normal is more like 23% probability. And you look at precipitation for St. George and there is a slight nudge towards below normal. Then you look at price and price is somewhere between Salt Lake City and St. George with the probabilities of both temperatures and precipitation. Precipitation largely equal bins with the high, slightly highest bin near normal. And then Logan, similar. The bins are all about the same size. So what's the main takeaway when you look at all these probabilities is that the way that the winter pattern evolves, where that jet stream sets up, where the Eastern Pacific high pressure sets up is going to have a large impact on whether we're near, below, or above normal, that there's not a strong signal for most of the state with what we can see so far as this pattern sets up. So that's something we're gonna really have to watch with the La Nina pattern. So one of the main questions we get is how will this impact our snowpack and our water supply and our drought situation as we go into the winter and spring next year? So this map is from October 24th, 2022. It's basin averaged soil moisture at eight inches. And that yellow color you see is 70 to 89% of average for the date. 
whereas those green colors are a little bit closer to normal, 90 to 109 percent. So parts of the state, especially near the Uinta Mountains and southwest of Richfield, are in very close to normal. Parts of state, the state like near Tooele, Price, and Cedar City are in that 50 to 69 percent bin. So soil and moisture is really important, and the, the pattern that we see over the next few weeks is going to be very important. Higher soil moisture means more efficient runoff in the spring. So whatever snowpack we do have, we'll see more of that runoff going into our reservoirs and water bodies. But snowpack is the single most important factor about where the drought will go next year. And so how progressive our winter pattern in winter pattern will be, it will have a big impact on our snowpack. That's something that we're gonna have to watch. But the biggest thing to remember is every La Nina is different. The previous two La Ninas, the last two winters, are not predictive of what we can expect this winter. So we're gonna have to continue to monitor the pattern as we go into November and December and see where that jet stream sets up, see where that upper level ridge sets up. And that will tell us a lot more about how this winter will go. So do you have any, if you have any questions, you can contact us through a wide variety of means. Email nws.saltlakecity at noaa.gov. Twitter, our handle is at nws.saltlakecity. Facebook, nws.saltlakecity. And our phone number, 801-524-5133. Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a great day.